was well, look, as a label owner, obviously a lot of the guys and girls that watch our our shows and, and follow the studio are all up-and-comers or established or whatnot. So what what key bits of advice would you maybe give to someone who's looking to sign to your label or to a label, being a label boss? What, what think, are you looking for when somebody sends you an email? I mean, I think first and foremost, don't send me a SoundCloud link with 30 plays on it. First thing. Right. I, just, I just don't even listen to it. I'll just yeah. delete it. Mm-hmm. That's a, for me. That's the most important thing. Sometimes, you know. Being you know, exclusive. Uh, was that sorry? Being exclusive, maybe like have uh, that in mind. Be clever about it. Yeah. You know, send out five people, take it down and upload it again. Uh, you know, you know, you don't have to just send it out to thirty labels. Yeah, for thirty plays to for me to click on it, and there's X amount of plays on it, and I'm just going to well. Yeah. Is SoundCloud something you prefer? Like, the, do you prefer it being submitted on SoundCloud or Dropbox? Is there any preference for you to label on it? I just, I just prefer clicking the, the link once Aye. and being able to listen to it. I don't want to be retransferring it. I don't want to be downloading it. Nah. Any time I'm downloading it, somebody's phoned me. Aye. I'm away queuing a riff or a hi hat or whatever. You're away, you're distracted, you're off again. Aye, aye, totally. What's it? It's making it easy as you can, in it, like for the person you're trying to get their attention of, make it as easy as possible, surely. Yeah, yeah and I think just, I think you just, I think like we spoke about in previous podcasts, I just think you, you, you have to, you know, you have to be sending tracks to labels. Don't finish a track and just pick 10, 20 labels. You know, for me, see me you're writing a track, target the, the label signs a track. You know, target the label. Mm-hmm. And Target what type of sound that they're going for mm-hmm. and write. If that's your vibe, if it's after dark, if it's aria, if it's outburst, listen to the last 20. Steve, if you're doing a techno track, you want it code, you're going to listen to the last 20, 30 drum code tracks and see what the actual, see what the, you know, how Aye. it lands, you know, what the flow of the tracks are. Makes sense. Um, what's, what's been done, what not to do, what other artists' identity are, like. Yeah. Yeah. We're all with us our day. Like, drum code don't want to sign another Enrico San Giuliano. They don't want to sign another Kelly or whatever. They want to sign the next artist. Aye, they want you to sound like them, but different. Different. Uh, sound like them, but different. Aye, totally. So they do. <laughs> you know, they want Adam Bayer wants to be able to play it in his set. Yeah. yeah. You know, I. You know, all these artists are brilliant. You know, but they want a bit of all the artists in a Stephen Cutler track. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. I've track, you know, it's me and Juna Beats. You need to sound, you need to have that sound because they have their own sound. They do. And that's a good thing for a label as well, isn't it? Knowing that where, where they fit. Aye, because it's like back in the day, you go into a record shop, you don't even need to listen to the track. Oh, it's in Juna Beats. He's one of them. Aye, I'll take it. I'll like it. You know, you know what you're going to get. You can't beat that when you know there's a style and it's 